Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a burrito. You probably already know, but you have to peel the onion first. And then since this one is kind of too big for what I'm needing, I'm going to use half of it. So I'll just cut this in half. I'll use this and then the way that I cut it or the way I start cutting it is that I'll have the root this part facing away from me so it'll be like this and the roots over here and then I'll be cutting close to the end but not all the way to the end I'll cut like this way like that down the onion Now I can flip it so that the root is up towards me and then I'll cut two cuts horizontally and they should be at a slightly downward angle so maybe like one up here that starts up here goes down like that and then another one down here that goes down this way. So that's what my second cut will be. And then after I do those horizontal cuts like this, I'm gonna keep it at that same angle and just cut downwards and it's gonna give me those cubes. And then once you get close to the root and you can't really go horizontal anymore, you can go diagonal and it'll still get you those small slices now I'm just pretty much I'm cutting around the root at this point if you have something at the bottom you can just turn it and cut it like this also Now for the bell pepper. So the way you wanna uh, position this one is you put the top, this part, facing downward like that. I'm gonna start the root facing down at an angle, go downwards, going out. And then once you like cut it open and you can see the inside and where the seeds are, you can kind of curve it back in. seeds in there unless you want the seeds and you can cut closer that's what the inside looks like and I'm just gonna keep repeating that around the whole thing and depending on how you want these you can cut them into small cubes or the way I like doing it is sliced it looks pretty cold like that so that's the way I do it I'll just cut it vertically like that across the whole thing you could pick the thickness that you want and if it's too long you can just turn it sideways and cut it in half for the meat I'm using filet mignon steak so what I like to do is to get a just a regular plate and a paper towel, because I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna wash the meat first and dry it. I'm gonna pat it dry. Like that. So the first thing I like doing is seasoning the board because I won't have to pick up the meat and flip it 
and then whenever I do that, the seasoning gets a little clumpy. So I'll season the board first. And the seasonings I'll be using are just normal salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. So I'll just season the board like this. Cover the area that I'm going to be putting the meat on. And don't be afraid to season it. That's where all the good flavor comes from. And after you season the board, just plop the meat on there. And then space them out evenly. Like that. Cut them down a little bit. Make sure the seasoning on the board gets in there. And after you've done that, Go ahead and season the top again. Same thing, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. There you go. And then with the leftover seasoning that's on the board from that overkill that I poured just seasoning the board, you can just flip your meats to the sides so you can season the sides also. Just roll it around too, like that. There you go. <laughs> Just pat down all the extra seasoning you have left on the board. For the pan heat, I like putting it on medium high. I don't usually work with like all the way high. That's scary. All that oil starts popping everywhere. For the oil, I have some vegetable oil that I use. I'm gonna put enough to cover the bottom of the pan. But I'm gonna keep it out because Later on, I'm going to need to add more. I tend to struggle with the oil evaporating before I'm done with everything. So I usually keep that out so I can put some more in later on. Now it's like a good warmth that would like warm up my hands during winter time. So that's when I would add my onions. I know you see tongs because I'm going to have to flip the meat later. I'm going to spread them out evenly across the pan. I'm going to just leave that on there for a little bit. After like a minute or two of letting the onions sit, you can mix them around. And then spread them out again. And then wait another minute or two. been about a minute I'm gonna mix these around again and then probably wait one more minute and we should be good it's already having some brown on the onion that's good I probably don't even have to wait a minute I need just 30 more seconds it's been over 30 seconds maybe close to a minute now and the onions are this color it's kind of blurry right now I don't know how to make it yeah, it's not making too well, but yeah, it looks like that. That's about a good color, and I could take it out and put it into a bowl. This is what the onions look like. Perfect. Got my four cuts of filet mignon here. Place them on the pan. You always want to place the meat so that the first thing that's touching is closest to you, and then you lay it so that the last part of the meat that touches the pan is away from you, so that the oil doesn't splash on you when you do it. Pours away. Pours away. So it's been about three minutes of sitting on the pan. This is around the type of sound that I'm going for, not too loud, not too quiet, it has a nice sizzle. And then 
how I know when to flip it is that um, the, you can kind of see on the sides of the meat that they start cooking too. And this one I can see it the best. It's like, I don't know if I can show you. This one over here, that one. You can see it's kind of cooking on the side and it's like getting to about halfway up the side. That's kind of what I'm going for. Have it cooked like halfway up the side if possible. Or another way is that you can kind of see the top start changing texture too. It starts looking more moist on the top. It starts looking a little wet. Like the moisture is getting up there. I don't know what that means, but that's kind of been a cue that I've been going for for when it comes to flipping meat. So I would say it's about ready to flip now. The top of the meat looks like this. It's been about five to six total minutes on this side. And I think that's good enough for flipping now. If I need to cook it more, I can always flip it again later. Flip it. Get under it. Flip it. Get under it. Do it. And then I'm gonna add some more oil because I lost like all my oil. <laughs> it evaporated. Add a good bit in there. Get all over the pan. Oh, that looks good. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Cross that flip it. That's the beard that I got. Beautiful. But as you can see, I'm at close to one here. That it still needs some more cooking. See all the red on the side. If I wait like three minutes, wait for that to cook. And then after those three minutes, around three minutes maybe, I will take each of the uh, steaks and then I'll flip them on the side and cook the sides a little bit so it has a more even color and to add a little more heat to the sides since they haven't been on the pan yet. So it's been around two, three minutes on this side and I think it's enough time to where I can start rolling them on its side to get the sides cooked a little bit. Cause after I get these sides heated up, then the others should be pretty cooked too. And for the sides, they only need to be on the sides for what, 15, 20 seconds. And another thing I forgot to mention is that you, the goal is to have the thicker parts of the meat towards the middle of the pan so they could cook a little better. I still struggle paying attention to that stuff I keep forgetting. And then I'll feel the top to see if it's cooked or not. And this is actually, uh, these two feel cooked already. So I'll actually take those out. I actually feel too hard now. I might have overcooked it. <laughs> Can't even get to the others yet. to a medium now and then I'll add the bell peppers in there. For 
do that evenly. I don't have mushrooms, I'm gonna grab the truffle and salt. I can get a pinch of it. Grab the truffle and salt in there, and now I can use my lemon pepper to give it a little brighter taste. We already have a really savory taste for all that garlic onion powder and just steak flavor in general. feel for its texture. It's getting a little softer now. So I'll probably wait about another minute for it to get a little softer. I like my bell pepper soft. And then after about a minute, I'll add the onions, so heat those onions back up. And then I'll give that another like 30 seconds and then I'll take everything out at the same time. It's been about a minute now, so I'll take the onions that I already cooked before and just put them back in the pan. Give them some heat to heat them back up. Then after about 30 seconds of mixing them around, I'll take them all out. So it's been about 30 seconds now. Now I can move everything back to the bowl that I just got it from. So this will be the final product of bell peppers and onions. So now I have my meat, and since I'm making burritos, I'm gonna wanna cut these into small pieces. And the way you cut the meat to make it softer is find the grain of the meat, and the grain is the direction that the muscles run. So for this one, I can see the muscles are running this way. So that means the way I want to cut it is the opposite perpendicular to it, this way. And that's how I'm gonna cut this one. Against the grain is what they call it. So this is what the meat looks like after it's all cut up. I actually really like the color on this. I'm gonna grab my tortilla. Just spin it around the stove to heat it up. After it's warm, you can put it on a big plate. And you're gonna put your ingredients on there. Then I'm gonna put the vegetables on. Lift it up, 
and now it's pretty centered. Grab the sides, hold it in, pull it out a little bit, grab the bottom, pull it to the top. Looks like this. Still have a little left here. And I cut it a little short. I didn't pull all the way to the end. Grab the sides, bring the sides in like that. Fold it up like that. And there, we got a burrito. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.